Well, actually, it's, it's interesting to, you have to sort of tell, uh, tell both stories. <laughs> we, the, the first study I did was, it was not major in the sense of being large. I think it was major in the size, in the, from the standpoint of what we were able to show. This uh, was started back in 1985 when we, uh, <clears throat> when I asked the Department of Cardiology to, to let me have approximately 24 patients who were seriously ill with heart disease and I was going to try to see if I couldn't get them to eat whole food plant-based nutrition. And <clears throat> a bit of background, uh, the, the concern I had was that I was not a clinical psychologist and the, my worst fears were that the patients would not comply. And therefore I decided that I would try to use for them the same mantra that I had been using for my cancer patients for years that I had learned from uh, Bert Dunphy, who was a marvelous West Coast surgeon. And Bert used to say that patients with cancer are not afraid to suffer. Patients with cancer are not afraid to die. But patients with cancer are afraid of being abandoned by their family or by their physician. So for the first five years of that study, I, uh, I saw every one of these patients every two weeks in the office where we would go over every morsel they ate, check their cholesterol, weight, and blood pressure every two weeks. At the end of five years, I got a little bolder about this, and I stretched it out to every month. Now, most cardiologists see their patients uh, otherwise stable twice a year. So by the end of a decade, uh, these patients were now pretty well on autopilot, and I was able to stretch it out uh, to quarterly. And then at 12 years is when I, we wrote them up and published their, our results. And it was really quite striking to see that uh, these patients who, interestingly enough, in the eight years prior to coming into our study, the 18 patients who stayed with us through the entire 12 years, they had had, in the eight years prior to coming into our study, while in the hands of expert cardiologists, these 18 patients had had 49 cardiac events of worsening disease. Once they came into our study, over the next 12 years, these 18 patients, 17 of the 18 had no further events. We, had a little, we did have one little sheep who <clears throat> wandered from the flock after six years, got into the lamb chops, the french fries, the glazed donuts. More angina, had to have the bypass, but now he's back with the flock, but proves the point that I'm trying to share with you today. So the, the first study was really fairly long, about as long as you'll ever see any study. It's almost a half a career, 12 years. And uh, it was so provocative that these results were, not only could we stop the disease, but we often saw measurable examples of disease reversal. And it was uh, just the other day, uh, one of the patients who was, had been told that when I started seeing her, and she was in her uh, late, late 50s, she'd had two heart attacks and she was told to go home and get a rocking chair. She lived over 30 years, just died, 90. Now, uh, the quality of, of life for these people is, was so different because once they get on this program and they begin to see their symptoms and their angina, be, everything begin to disappear and get better, uh, it is absolutely so empowering because they recognize that not the pills, not the procedures, but what it is that they themselves are doing. They, they have become the locus of control to absolutely annihilate this disease that was trying to tr destroy them. And how do they do it? With absolutely delicious food. <laughs> 
pretty, pretty, pretty crazy. Now, the, the second study that we got in, because in all due candor, uh, our, our study really up, upset a lot of people because the status quo was being challenged. Now, with all due respect, physicians are making a very handsome living for those who do stents and bypasses. And uh, suddenly, what would happen if these, <laughs> if these weren't, need weren't needed? Yeah. So, <clears throat> uh, our critics said that, Dr. Esselstyn, it's very, sure, it's interesting that you've got these results with these small number of patients, but your diet is pretty extreme and strict. And what makes you think you're going to be able to do this with a larger group and do you ever get similar results? So, in July of 2014, in the Journal of Family Practice, we published, this time, a study of some 200 patients. And two of them had been lost to follow-up. So we had 198. Of the 198, 177, 89.3%, almost 90% were adherent to this diet, which is, we're told, is extreme and strict, but made up of delicious food. And what happened was that we followed these patients for close to four years, and this time, of all those who were adherent, one patient had a stroke. If you measure the major cardiovascular events, heart attack, stroke, and death, one patient had a stroke. So we had the data, and again, the, the, the same things that we were seeing that we were told uh, wouldn't happen. So it was replicated. And uh, so it's very exciting and very inspiring for patients to know how powerful it can be for them to make this kind of commitment and make it happen. Now, sure, it's a challenging because every time you do anything socially in this country, there's going to be food. And it's always going to be, without question, food that's going to injure you. So it's a challenge for these people. But uh, if you're going to have a lifestyle change as a as a physician, if your patients are going to change, you have got to be willing. If you're going to get a behavior change, you have got to show a patient respect. Now, the only way that I know to show a patient respect is to give them my time. And we're in a situation now where the, the present format, where I see patients at the Cleveland Clinic Wellness Institute, uh, it's for 85 percent of these patients come from outside the state of Ohio. So how they cannot stay for days at a time. So we had to put together into one intensive counseling seminar for these patients, always and always, always with your spouse or significant other. You're wasting your time if you just talk to half of the, of the couple. So these patients, <clears throat> in six hours, are going to learn all about the s science and vocabulary that they can grasp and get their arms around. So that once they've got the science and they understand they have their disease because they have destroyed the capacity of their endothelial cells to make nitric oxide, they didn't have enough to protect themselves, and that they can be empowered to restore the ability of their nitric oxide production from endothelial cells by no longer injuring them, they get it. They absolutely get it. And why would there ever, and the under, any circumstances you can think of when there's food, why would anybody who understands this say, oh, look, I haven't had this in a while, but boy, I'm looking forward to destroying some more of my endothelial cells. What? Nonsense. Anybody with heart disease and a brain in their head, once you have shared this information with them, they are empowered to, to absolutely uh, to stop their disease. Yeah. And 
I'm, I'm, maybe I'm a little old fashioned, but also uh, 10 days before our seminar, my secretary gives me a list of who is coming with their phone number. And I always insist on calling them myself so that I can get my arms around their story and they have an opportunity at the same time to ask questions of me so that coming to the seminar, we have a strong platform from which we can, uh, we can all move forward. Thank you.